Hi everybody. This morning I just felt like playing with some of these little Halloween type um, elements. So I drew them all out beforehand and I'll um, put this in the community tab if you'd like to get my little drawing. It's pretty simplified. And, <coughs> excuse me, today I'm using, um, <coughs> excuse me, my 140 pound cold press paper. This is, as you know, I love Artisto. I think it's such a great band, brand for beginners, and I've tried a lot. Um, I do love my little spiral brown um, Artisto pads because I can keep them all together um, and say make this one for Halloween and one for fall and one for my color boards and maybe practice strokes, and then I can always come back and refer to it. So here's some of my color boards, some of my flowers, um, some more colors that I came up with. So I like having them in the spiral bound. Uh, I'll, I'll link those for you. They have a really great texture to them as well. And just recently, I just came across their larger pads. They're not spiral bound, but they're the same 140 pound, 300 GSM, and they're cold press. And they have that wonderful texture uh, that I really like. And they're not the cheapest, um, but they're a good student grade. I couldn't afford to paint on arches every day for all of these just fun paintings I do. So I'm really happy with those. And I will um, link that for you as well if you'd like to try it. So that's what I've got here. I've also got, um, again, my My Lang paints that you see me use a lot. Again, I can't afford to paint on Winter Newton every day, so these are great for me. And for beginners, they just offer you so many different colors. You don't have to be overwhelmed by trying to mix colors as a new uh, watercolor um, artist. So I kind of like that. The one thing is you cannot replace these wells. So I just fill them up with my tube paints, which is fine for me. And then making sure whenever you're painting, you have your two wells, one to wash, one to rinse, really important when you're doing watercolors because they're so translucent, you wanna make sure you don't carry over the color you were using into the new color. Um, and I love all these Meaden products, big fan. They're really nice porcelain. They're reasonable and um, sturdy. And then I've got my Meaden palette as well with all this space I can paint. And as far as my paintbrushes, um, I'm gonna be using my six long round Princeton Velvet Touch. Love the feel of those. Um, I've got my larger 12 round Princeton and my eight. So I think because this is a little bit smaller, I'll probably just use my eight and my six. Uh, if you have bought this set of Degatos because you don't want to quite invest in the Princeton, the Princeton aren't um, real expensive, but um, you know, if you just kind of want to play right now, they're probably anywhere from eight to $10 for the ones that I'm showing you, but you get a whole set of these Degatos for maybe $15, and I've been really, really pleased. They're snappy, um, and they, they've held their points really well, and I've used these for about four months. All right, so let's get started. I'm gonna be using a lot of water, um, so wet and wet, and I'm also gonna be using that technique I love of push and pull. So um, let's go ahead and we'll start with our little witch's hat. And I think what I'll do is maybe wet. I don't want puddles. I'm just using the tip of my brush and dampening all of this surface. So just getting it wet. I know you can't really see this on uh, camera probably. So just going in, no puddles again, just damp. And then I think I'll go into, I do a little bit of black, but I also want some purple because I just love purple in my witch's hats. I think it makes them a little bit funner. And I'm gonna go in and just do a light wash, maybe creating some creases there. Something like that. A little bit more of that purple. 
and there we go. So I think that's good enough for me. I'll go in now and wet the brim here. I'm leaving this space for maybe a little orange sash or something like that. And notice I did leave white space in here too. So I'm gonna go in and just do the same thing. Wet that area, there we go. And look how interesting keeping those um, white spaces are. The little spider here, I'm going in with a little darker value and just going to paint that, but I did leave a white space. Now I'm gonna pick up my six long round because it has a little finer tip and just go in now that this is drying a bit and maybe add in some purple. I always feel like purple is such a fun color for Halloween hats. I love it. Gosh, you could even do a pink. Why not, right? This is your witch. You could make her however you want. There we go. Yeah, I like that. I don't want to get too caught up in um, painting each one because we've, oops, sorry, I hit my camera. We've got four here, so I don't want to get too detailed. I could probably play with this all day long. I am going to darken some of the areas here, so I'll go into my black and my purple and just go in underneath where that little buckle is. And maybe in here, like that. So I'm gonna leave that for how it is right now. I think that's really pretty. And let's move to our candy corn. I'm going to go in again and I'll just wet my entire candy corn and then go into my cad orange, which I've got some on my palette already here because I've been painting so many fun um, Halloween things. And I've got a nice mixture here. It's very movable. It's not too opaque. And I'm going to, gosh, now I'm forgetting what, I think it's white, at, oops, white at the top. Um, Oh my gosh, I forgot the colors of candy corn. And maybe we'll just do orange in the middle, like that. I'm not going into um, each area yet. And my goodness, how could I have forgotten what color candy corn is? I wanna say the tip is white and let's do the bottom here like a cad yellow. And we'll kind of let them blend in together. Something like that, I think's really pretty. Keeping it relatively simple. While it's wet, I'm just touching in a little bit. There we go. So pretty easy. Let's, since we're leaving the tops white, I won't even get those wet. And let's go in again here. This would be such cute little cards. And then into that yellow, cad yellow. And there you go. Maybe a little bit darker orange, maybe with even just a tiny bit of red in there, just to add some interest. Like that. And then I'm just gonna leave that and let it kind of blend out. And we'll move to our last one here. Again, I'm not going to even wet the top because I'm leaving that white. And we'll go into our orange again. There we go. And then our yellow in the bottom. Doing these relatively quick and maybe a little bit of that cad red and cad orange and kind of touch in. I just think it gives it some interest. 
there we go and then a tiny bit of the orange in the bottom there too and there you go we're pretty much done with those um, I've got a little piece of candy here we could certainly color in with some oranges and some now uh, too I've got um, notice I'm leaving whites in there I've got these drawn much darker than I might normally because I wanted you to be able to see them and then I'll go in again with that yellow and maybe some of that red and cad orange for the little wrapper pieces. So this is just fun and would be so cute for a little card. Just tapping in. And since this is dry, Er, dryer I think what I'll do is go in there and add a tiny bit of shadows and shading just under the brim there and what I'll do is wash and rinse my brush and just with a damp brush the tip go in and soften that line a little bit. So I'm barely touching into it. Now I'm gonna turn my paper here so I can do the same along here. So I'm just barely touching in to those edges. And what that does is it just kind of softens that line like that. Now I could even add in a tiny bit of black or Payne's gray I don't want to do too much of that because I'm trying to keep this kind of light and look how pretty that really creates some fun there. A little bit of that Payne's gray and like that. And there you go. And once this really dries, we'll go in and add in that gold or that, uh, I'm gonna lift a little bit right there so we can see that this is the brim of the hat. And you could just use an ink pen to draw his little legs. Maybe do a tiny bit of shading On the sides there, push and pull with a damp tip. There you go. So we're going to leave that alone there. Okay. Then let's go on to this fun little ghost. So I'm going to pretty much wet my entire area here. And I'm still using my six. So just wetting all of this area, all my little folds, like this. And most of him's gonna be white. I'm not real concerned about getting the eyes or the mouth because I'm gonna paint those black anyway. And then again, I'm gonna use this um, uh, purple, and grayish color for my ghost. Even maybe some of this sky blue, I think could be really pretty on this little ghost. And that's in the My Lang palette. Yeah, look how pretty that is. And just using the side of my brush to add in some little folds and things like that. And I think that's almost enough. As it dries, I could go in and just darken a few areas if I wanted, maybe to show some shadows. But I think she he's really cute. And then I've got some very simple little 
foliage and flowers. So I'm going to go into my sap green and my dark green and add in just some dabs. Maybe change up some of the colors. Like that. Just for some interest. Uh, let's see, here's a leaf. A couple more leaves. And I think I'll do some little orange yellowish leaves here. Like that, that's kind of fun. Not, I'm leaving a lot of white space and I'm gonna go in with the yellow. And let it kind of blend together. That's kind of pretty. And then maybe make these so I can carry that orange throughout. I'll maybe create some little orange berries here and there like that and the tip of my brush so very light pressure this is where warm-ups are so important so that you know how much brush pressure it takes to create some lighter thinner lines and just a few more dabs. And then I think for the little flowers, maybe we'll do, oh, how about we do some goldish yellows? So I'm gonna use my CAD yellow and just create some little flowers here and there. Just peeking out And I think that's really pretty. This should be dry, so let's try and paint in our little eyes of our ghost. And his little mouth. There we go. And then our last one is our little cauldron, and then we'll go back in and do this little gold or orange. Maybe we'll do that in the My Lang, um, uh, we'll use the metallic. So I'm gonna paint this cauldron. I will leave white space in there. Like that. These little feet. Just keeping this pretty simple. And I really do like this um, six brush. It's um, got a really nice point on it. This is actually to the long round and we'll do maybe a little handle on there. So here's some little handles on the side and then something like that. And for those of you I know in the past have said, my hand isn't steady enough to do some of these lines, just use I can't help but put some purple in my little cauldron. There we go. Um, just use a pen if you want, that's fine. And then I'm gonna add in a couple little folds here. So I colored that in and then I went in and I'm just lifting a little bit of that color because it was a little dark for me. There we go. I like that better. And maybe some, a tiny bit of that blue. And I 
I think she's quite a pretty ghost, actually. There we go. Maybe add in some little orange leaves in here. And then let's do our belt in the hat here. So I'm gonna grab, this is another My Lang palette. That one is the 36 colors, which is plenty, but I was really curious about their metallic. So I also got the 48 set. And this is the metallic gold, which is always fun for me because I just love the metallics. I think I might even add some metallics into this candy corn could be really fun like that and there you go even into that maybe we could use some of the purple metallic in this little pot oh it's still got some of that gold on it which is fine i kind of like the gold in there i think that's pretty So there you go. I think this is really fun. Let's see what would happen if we added some of that purple metallic to our little witch's hat here. Now, one thing I do notice whenever I use metallic is uh, it doesn't flow quite as easily as um, regular paint does. So just keep that in mind. So I think this is quite fun. Play with this, maybe make some cards that you could send to, um, you know, family. I'm just adding in while that's still wet, a little bit of reddish color in that fall leaf. And then I notice I forgot to color in the center of this flower. So I'm just taking the tip of my brush, very, very light pressure and drawing some of that in. And I think we're pretty much done. Um, I always will continue to play and add things in, but I think this is quite nice. Maybe use a pen and uh, let's see. I just got here my regular ballpoint pen to outline some of this. Might give a little bit of feeling of some detail since part of that candy corn is white. There you go, and maybe, oops, maybe add in some of these lines. Sometimes it's kind of fun to play with that. And then I definitely would use a pin to draw in this fun little spider web here which it's kind of wet so it's not showing up so well but once it dries let's see maybe my pencil might work back better there we can go in and just outline the little web like that as well as our little spider feet here using my pen. I think now my pen has gotten paint on it and isn't working so well. So these are just some fun little ideas for some cards for you. Um, give them a try. You could always just keep going in and darkening some areas, which is what I tend to do. Just to get that little bit of shadow there. 
Watercolors always dry much lighter than when you put them on there, but look at what a difference that made. It really kind of drew that out. And then maybe even around there. So this is what is fun about watercolors is creating these layers and then maybe just the tiniest bit at the bottom there. Like that. And the, the reason why I'm adding this in is because I want you to be able to see the brim of that hat. So I feel like doing a little bit of negative painting there, kind of draws it out. And then just using a damp brush to soften that line. Like that. See what a difference that can make? It really created some depth there and it gives a little bit more dimension Layers is always key in watercolors. Always adding in these wonderful layers can really create so much interest in your hats. Now, I didn't really want those lines to go all the way across, so I'm just going to tap those off a bit. And I was trying to make my hat a little bit colorful, but being very careful not to get rid of all of my white space here. So I'm trying to really preserve that white space. And there we go. I think, I think I'm done now. I think I'm going to quit. I can tend to keep working something to the point where now I've overworked it. So let's just leave that at that. I think this is really cute. Um, have fun with this, make some cute cards as gifts. And um, I will list everything I used here in my description below. All right, everybody have fun.